Welcome back. Once again, Chief Meteorologist Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. And today we've got a video chock full of very interesting stuff. We've got a powerful system moving into the Pacific Northwest that's eventually going to move into the Great Lakes region and the Northeast. And beyond that, we're just entering a very active pattern where everybody has multiple shots at big snowstorms as we go into the future. We are going to be tracking every single one of these storms right here on this channel almost every day as we go into the future. So make sure you're subscribed as we watch and try to figure out who's going to be the next one that gets buried in snow. I know not everybody likes snow, but you guys do. I can tell from my comments. All right, let's just get right into it and start talking about the weather bulls. Hey, yo, here's a big old view of the United States of America east of the Rocky Mountains right now. Not a lot going on, except if we zoom in way down here on southern Florida, we've got a pretty light area of showers moving southeast towards Miami. And just off the coast of Miami, we have a marine weather statement for some stronger thunderstorms that are moving through that area. Now let's zoom out and go all the way to the complete opposite side of the country, the Pacific Northwest and just look at all this stuff that's going on. We've got high wind watches, high wind warnings, avalanche watches, winter weather advisory, winter storm watches, and of course a ton of flood advisories and flood warnings and flood watches. And if we really zoom in here, you can just see how Washington and Oregon and northern parts of California are just getting inundated by a ton of Pacific moisture. And this area is used to seeing a lot of rain this time of year, but we've had a training event where multiple storm systems have brought more than average rainfall to this area over a short period of time, and now we're starting to deal with the flooding. And then further north up here, especially in the mountains, these people are gonna get dumped on with snow. Now, all of this is associated with a bigger storm system that's making landfall in northern parts of Canada right now. We can see that closer on the satellite image. Check this out, big area of circulation with the frontal boundary all the way down into the United States. That coupled with a very intense Pacific jet is the reason why the Northwest is so wet right now. And all of this is associated with our next storm system that we're gonna watch as it cuts into Canada and then drops down into the Great Lakes region and then eventually over into the mid-Atlantic and Northeast. We can see that a lot better on the weather models. Let's check them out. All right, here we go. This is the Euro model. Here's all that mess going on in the Northwest right now. Watch it closely as I put this into motion. There's going to be a couple waves try to break free and then eventually we have that low pressure system that makes it out and that's the one that's going to drop into the Northern Plains and Great Lakes region. All right, let's put it into motion. Look at all that and here is our storm system. We're looking at the 13th of January right here. Today's the 12th, so we're really close to the beginning stages of the storm. Areas in Idaho and Montana are still dealing with heavy snow. And then as we keep on going, this low pressure system is going to get caught up in the jet stream and really dig south. Let's keep it going here. We're on the 14th of January now. A deepening low pressure system right on the border of Minnesota and Wisconsin, causing heavy snow showers for southern Canada. A lot of Minnesota, some parts of South Dakota, North Dakota, Wisconsin, and even Iowa are getting in on some heavier snow bands. And this is draping a cold front with it that's going to try to bring in some of that polar air into more south and eastern parts of the United States as we go forward. Watch when I play this out, the low pressure system just kind of hangs out and deepens for a minute. You can see how these isobars are really close together over here. That's going to mean pretty strong winds for this area. And here comes that cold air, baby. Cold front going from Pennsylvania all the way down into Mississippi, maybe even some parts of Louisiana. Now this area of the cold air isn't as intense as what some of the earlier model runs were showing, but it's still cold. And you don't need extremely intense cold air to spark snowstorms. And then as we keep putting this into motion, watch here, we've got an area of moisture that's going to try to interact with our cold front. And there it goes, low pressure system. And it looks like there's a pretty decent shot for the interior northeast to get some snow out of this one. This is one that we've been watching for a couple days. And I've said multiple times that this has the potential to blow up a little bit more than what the models are showing because the Atlantic Ocean is extremely warm right now. And if we can get that warmth and that moisture to interact with the storm in the right way, it could make some snow lovers very happy in this region. However, if you live closer to the ocean, this could be a problem with allowing the cold air to make it in because most of your moisture, most of your activity is going to be coming off of the Atlantic Ocean. And then as we go on, that moves out of here and the lake effect machines turn on. Going to be a lot of snow for somebody in this area as we move forward. And then here we are on the 18th of January. Watch this right here and watch this. We've had a lot of systems this year that started out this way. We get some activity coming off the Pacific Ocean, slides down through the Rocky Mountains and meets up with a little bit of something from the Gulf of Mexico. And that's exactly what happens here. But this time, instead of this wave deepening and trying to move east, a lot of the moisture is disconnected, especially the stuff that we get from the Pacific Ocean. It looks to me like it tries to just fling southeast really fast, which seems kind of unrealistic to me. I don't believe the models are handling this very well. But watch, as I put it into motion, it just kind of hangs out there. And then on the last frame, this is the last frame of the Zero Z Euro. We do have a storm trying to form here. We do have a wave, and this will be something to look out for in the future that, that could possibly 
possibly be one of those storms that interacts with the jet stream that phases up and gives us something good. Right, let's play it out one more time just so everybody can get a full view of it. That's the Euro. Let's take a look at some snowfall totals in Minnesota because I believe they're going to be the winners of this first storm. All right, here's the great state of Minnesota. Let's put this snow map in motion. Watch it fall. Watch how quickly it comes down. There we go. We're going to end this around the 111 hour mark because that's around when all of the first storm moves out. Looks to me like the Minneapolis area you can see about five inches of snow. The bullseye is going to be right along Lake Superior. Duluth could see about 10 inches of snow. Some areas in central Minnesota near Leech Lake could see like 9, 10 inches of snow. And the majority of the state is over six inches. So it's going to be a pretty decent snowstorm for Minnesota. I mean, these guys are used to this stuff. But yeah, that's the snow totals on the Euro. Let's switch over to the Canadian. All right, back to the nationwide view. Let's put the Canadian in motion. There's our first storm. It sends that cold air just as south as the Euro does. And as we keep playing it, it stalls it out once again. And our second low pressure system looks to me like it's in a little bit of a better position on the Canadian to cause snow for upstate New York, Vermont, and New Hampshire than the Euro. And if we keep playing that out, Looks like northern Maine gets in on the snow action. And once again, there's our lake effect. And we've got a pretty interesting dip right here around the 18th of January. And we have a little bit of moisture that could possibly play around with it. Let's see what the Canadian does with it. And not much. So it does form a storm and it does start to bring down more cold air. It looks to me like the Canadian's taking it out to sea directly east. This is one though that we will have to keep an eye on. And as we play this on out, there's another little something that tries to pop up here around the 21st of January. And then that just kind of goes out to sea as well. Not, not a lot to see there. And yeah, that's the Canadian. Not too exciting, honestly, but let's take a look at the GFS. GFS time. It's time to look way out into La La Land and let's put it into motion. Here's our first storm. Watch it play out there. Here comes our cold air. This one looks like it's a little bit more uh, tilted in this direction. The rest of them kind of had a neutral straight U like that. No matter what though, we do know that this is going to happen. All the models agree with this. Cold front's going to come in and bring some cold air all the way down into the southern portions of the United States. And from this point, we just need something to interact with it. We need a low pressure system in the south to phase with that jet stream and cause us our big snowstorm. There's that first opportunity up here, 1,001 millibar low pressure system, nothing too crazy. I do believe that upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine will see a little bit of snow from a system like this. Let's keep it rolling here. Here's our second opportunity, a little dip right there. We've got moisture in the Gulf. Let's see what it does with that. It kind of gets rid of it and then reforms over here as a 1,000 millibar low pressure system with a little bit of a chance of snow for New York, Pennsylvania, all of New Jersey though. Hey, you guys will take a flurry, right? Then we have this little weird thing that we were seeing on the Euro and the GFS handles it a little differently. It's a little faster getting it out of the Gulf of Mexico. And we do have this low pressure system up here that's gonna try to bring some more cold air down. It's gonna dip that jet stream once again. And if we can see some phasing, we might be in Snowtown. I don't know. Right, let's pull it forward. Another little low pressure system pops up right here. Pretty strong cold front coming in. What's gonna happen? And boom, very quickly, a 975 millibar low pressure system is formed off the coast of New York. And according to this, model run we've got heavy snow bands from Boston all the way down into central and southern New Jersey and it's weird because the low pressure system kind of gets batted away by that cold front watch you can see it right here and then as I put it into motion that meet up right there and then the low pressure system's like nope <laughs> it's literally like a baseball bat hitting a baseball which uh, kind of looks unrealistic to me honestly I don't know if the GFS is handling this storm right or not to be honest we're 258 hours out here so like everything should be taken with a grain of salt but this is one of those areas of interest that we really really need to keep our eye on as we go forward. I'm, I'm glad that the GFS is still seeing stuff like this happen because it means that we are in that active pattern. Somebody's going to get a big snowstorm at the end of January. I just don't know who it is. And then as we keep playing, we got another pretty good storm system that moves in right here on the 26th of January, bringing uh, central Pennsylvania, all of New York, Connecticut, Massachusetts, and uh, you know, everybody's got a chance for snow on this one. And then we're going to keep playing that out. And another storm system is forming right here at the end of January. So yeah, like I've been saying, for like a week now we are entering a very active pattern as we go later on into january so i think we've got a chance of tracking some big ones guys so we will definitely be paying attention to all those areas of interest as we go into the future and just for fun let's take a look at the snowfall map on that one all right snowfall maps getting put into motion as you can see that first storm on the gfs really kind of leaves central minnesota in the dry it doesn't put as much snow down there still a lot of snow for northern wisconsin and the areas around lake superior and then also it looks like vermont and new hampshire and maine get a pretty good amount of snow from that first storm putting in motion that other storm comes through and really drops it down uh pretty looks like a pretty big bullseye right there around new york city and then as we keep pushing it on out it just lights up like a christmas tree like the gfs always does just for fun let's take a look at some snow totals on this map boston it looks like it's possible you can get a foot of snow all the way through january 28th syracuse new york's 20 inches why not philadelphia even in la la land <laughs> 
even in mystical fantasy land of long-term GFS forecasting. You only are in the one to two inch range. I'm sorry. Hartford, Connecticut, all of Connecticut, really 15, 16 inches. And then Northern and Central Pennsylvania um, is in a good spot to get some snow out of this too. So like, you know, once again, we look at this just to see how active the pattern is going to be. The exact placement of uh, totals is not right, but I'm happy it's showing this because we are going to have the cold air in place and we're going to have storms coming through. Somebody's going to be in snow town, baby. All right, guys, that's all the weather talk I got for you today. We are entering a very active pattern and it's going to be awesome to, to watch everything go through with you guys. I want to hear from you. Make sure you leave a comment down below and let me know what you think is going to happen with the pattern. Who do you think is going to be the winners? Who do you think is going to get this snow? The GFS has been showing somebody is getting snow with every run. Changes every time, but somebody's going to end up being the winner. Who do you think is going to get in on the big snow totals whenever we finally get our other big storm come through? Keep hoping for snow. Do your little snow dance, and uh, I'll see you next time. All right? We'll see you. Bye. Whoop.